Knowing what the vacancy is in a particular area is an important statistic to know if you're going to go ahead and invest in that area or even if you already own a home or investment property in that area. Vacancy rates can be a great indicator of potential future growth and an indicator of how your property is going to perform. Hi, I'm Ryan McLean from onproperty.com.au, your daily dose of property education and inspiration. Today's episode is brought to you by bluehorizonsproperty.com. If you're interested in high growth, positive cash flow properties with low vacancy rates, then head over to bluehorizonsproperty.com to find out more. So why are vacancy rates so important? Well, firstly, vacancy rates will show you a top level view of the health of a particular area. They say that standard vacancy rates of a healthy area hovers around two to three percent. So once you start to see vacancies of four or five or more than five percent, then it is a red flag and cause for concern. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's not a good good area to invest in. It just means that you should do some more research. How are vacancy rates calculated? Well, I don't know the exact method used to calculate vacancy rates, but there's a variety of different business out there that collect and analyze real estate data to provide us with these details. My estimation is that vacancy rates would be analyzed by looking at properties on the market at any point in time versus rental properties in the area. So these statistics, these people tend to know everything about every particular property. So they're going to know if it's owner occupied or if it's rented. And so by comparing what is on the market now available for rent to actually what is being rented out, you can get a rough assumption of what the vacancy rates are in an area. Now vacancy rates could indicate potential growth in an area. If vacancy rates are extremely low, maybe 1% or 0.5%, that means that there is a greater demand for properties than there is supply for people to actually rent those properties. And what happens when demand is greater than supply? Well, in most instances, the value of the property is going to increase and the value of your rental yield or your rental income is going to increase as well. Now, obviously, you need to consider a variety of factors in the area, not just vacancy rate, things like new infrastructure, a growing population, what the economics of the area are like, you've got to look at demographics and so forth. But vacancy rates can give you a top level idea of how the area is going. And if you're going to be going ahead and purchasing an investment property, well, then you want to know that that investment property is going to be rented because if it's not rented, then you're going to be missing out on a lot of money every single week. So how do we find out what the vacancy rates for an area are? Well, I've got with me here the latest edition of Australian Property Investor Magazine. So this is the March 2014 edition, and it's actually, you can pick up this magazine or you can pick up any of the investment magazines and you should be able to find in the back a list of vacancy rates for the area. You can see here, let me just go to it. We've got this page, you can see all these columns, but you can see right there vacancy rates. And so this will now show us all of the vacancy rates in an area. So let me turn the camera around and let's get a better idea, a better view of vacancy rates and how you can analyze it in more detail. Today's episode is brought to you by bluehorizonsproperty.com. When it comes to investing in property, sometimes it can be so easy to get really overwhelmed. You need to research and find the growth areas and find the right properties within them and that can be very difficult. All in all, it can be a recipe for disaster if you're a new investor because one wrong move can cost you thousands of dollars. Cor and Helene from Blue Horizons Property are successful property investors who have amassed a property portfolio which at one stage was over 70 properties. They successfully predicted the boom of many different areas throughout Queensland and they now specialize in high yield, high growth, positive cash flow properties in the Surratt Basin, which is in Queensland. They act as a property partner to their clients, giving them first access to new releases, as well as helping them through the entire purchasing process. 
They personally invest in the area and many of their properties generate rental yields upwards of 10% with the added benefits of depreciation as well. Visit bluehorizonsproperty.com and view their featured properties today. Okay, so here we are, I've flipped it around so we can see it in more detail. As you can see, it's just three pages long, so it's pretty simple to use. The magazine then goes into more details that are really good as well about houses, and there's a section for units as well that shows you growth of the area and so forth. But let's have a look at an area, what the vacancy rates is, and then look at the growth that that area's had as well. So let's find an area where I used to live, which is called Cronulla. And so that's in New South Wales and it's 2230. So where are we? Two, as you can see, must be around here somewhere. 2230, Cronulla. Okay, so I wanted to look at that area. That's where I used to live in Sydney. We can see here this first column is how many properties were on the market for rent. And this is the vacancy rate. And this was in November 2012. So we can see that the vacancy rate is 1.6%. And now we can look at November 2013. So it gives you a year difference. And we can see that there were 63 properties on the market and vacancy rates were 1.3%. So vacancy rates for the area have actually gone down. You can see Guy Mere, which is a few suburbs away from Cronulla, vacancy rates extremely low, 0.5%. Janali, 0.4%. Oyster Bay, 0.9%. These are all within 10 minutes drive of each other. And so you can see extremely low vacancy rates there. We can look just over here, we can see this suburb Barrington. I don't know where that is, but you can see a 5% vacancy rate. And if we go even higher and we're looking at Willarla, you can see it's gone from a 6.7% vacancy rate to a 14.9% vacancy rate. So big vacancy rate in that area, and given that there's only 20 properties on the market, and that's 14.9%, I would expect that that would be a pretty small town but as you can see, you can just go through and you can look at all the vacancy rates. Now let's have a look at um, Guy Mir because this was the one where vacancy rates dropped from 1.2 to 0.5%. Let's see if there's any correlation with Guy Mir and prices in that area. So if we flick over and we go here to Market Watch Houses and we go to New South Wales. Now we just need to find G for Guy Mir, so flip over the page again, E, F, G, and it's got to be down here somewhere, my finger's on it. All right, so we can see Guy Mir, and what we've got here is we've got the numbers of properties sold, median price, so 744000 not a cheap suburb, three-month growth, 3.5%, 12-month growth, 12.6%, three-year growth, 5.7%, 5.8 and 3.3 over 10 years. We can see that the median advertised rent is $580 per week. The gross yield is 4.2 and average days on market is 30. So we can definitely see some growth in the last three months and then in the last 12 months, significant growth at 12.6%. Now that's a correlation between rental vacancies. It's not saying that if the vacancy goes down, then the price is going to increase, but it is definitely something that you guys might want to consider if you're looking at purchasing an investment property. So there you have a simple strategy for finding vacancy rates in an area. All you need to do is get one of these magazines, Australian Property Investor. It's gonna cost you $9.95 at your local news agency. You can get subscriptions online as well if you don't have a news agency close to you because they're probably all shutting down at this point in time. But yeah, that will give you good access to some of that data at the end. I'm sure, I'm sure that there are some ways that you can find it online but at the moment, I'm not 100% sure how you do that. It's not something that I've covered. But in the future, I will definitely consider creating a video of how to discover rental vacancies using an online tool because I am sure that if the data is in here in an old school magazine, then of course it is going to be on the internet. It's just whether it's going to be available for free or whether we're going to have to pay for it. 
So until tomorrow, when I speak with Wally Gabriel from Granny Flat Solutions, and we talk about the benefits of investing in Granny Flats, and then the following day, we, talk, we walk you through step by step exactly how you can invest in a Granny Flat, and let me tell you, it sounds pretty easy. And so until tomorrow, remember that your long-term success is achieved one day at a time.